You hear me now? Great, okay. Good. Now you're going to hear Trisha. We've got a wonderful guest today, and she's going to introduce her for you. So, Good morning. How's everybody today? Oh, come on. Better? Come on. You can do better than that. It's unity, people. Come on. Okay, I'm going to introduce our speaker, but before I do that, I've got a couple of special guests that I want you to know as well. Our Bishop Keith Earl from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and my brother in faith, um, Chris McCarty, who's also on our South Dallas Interfaith Council, so they're visiting us today. James called me a few weeks ago, and he said, uh, how many special guests can you get for, the, for you know, Sunday, the, for the, what day is it, the 3rd of September? And I went, I don't know, what do you want a special guest for? And he goes, oh, I'm going on sabbatical, and I need you to, because you got all these interfaith connections, I need you to get me a special speaker. And I went, okay, what flavor? I mean, I can do Hindu, Buddhist, Jewish, Christian, Islam, Baha'i, Sikh, what flavor? And he goes, no, 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 you pick. I don't care. I went, okay. So, I had my friend Priya do the service over at the Unity in Fort Worth a few years ago, and she was just absolutely wonderful. So, I told James, let me see. I got a really special lady to introduce to you. She's one of two female Sikh priests in the whole world. The other one being in India. So, she's absolutely an amazing spirit, amazing person, and she's going to talk about unity and community from the Sikh perspective. I don't know if you know much about the Sikhs. They were uh, formed in northern India around the 1540s, I believe, 1500, mid-1500s, and Guru Nanak did, is the guru that founded the Sikh there have been 10 gurus, I believe. I teach classes on Sikhism, okay? I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But please help me give a warm unity welcome to Shabad Priya. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Tricia, for that wonderful introduction. I hope you guys don't mind that I, I sit like this. I like to be closer to people. Usually I'm sitting on the floor. So um, it's nice to be sitting on a stool with shoes on. I really enjoy that. <laughs> As Trisha said, my name is uh, Priya. My name's actually Shabad Priya Kor. Um, I won't be offended if you call me Priya. It's much, much easier. I'm a Sikh Granthi. We don't really have the word priest, uh, but the closest thing in Western terminology is priest, so that's very close. Um, I came to Siki after a near-death experience. We're not going to talk about that today. Some other time, if you want to know, I'll let you know. Um, but don't worry. I've studied world spirituality since age 12. I've completed training with the Sikh Missionary College, and I've held the position of head Granthi at a local Gurdwara for five years. Uh, now I run a nonprofit and I minister to those who don't attend Gudwada, which is where Sikhs worship. Um, I am taking care of the spiritual needs of those who don't want to get up on Sunday and come in. Uh, and their children. Somebody has to do it, right? Um, I'm 60 years of age, and yes, I broke my hand walking a new 12-pound puppy that bested me this week. Uh, but I did help clear 
the shelter. So I feel really good about doing that. It's, it's, it was entirely my fault, not Ginger's. And my husband and I is, uh, we love her to death. He is corralling that puppy as we speak at home. Uh, my personal style is very relaxed and approachable, a lot like Reverend James's. And I think that that's because we are both from Memphis. <laughs> and he wanted me to make sure that I let you know about that. So one point for me. <laughs> now, as Tricia said, uh, Sikhism is a faith rooted in the uh, notion of universal equality for all mankind. Um, it started in the 16th century. I'll get to that in just a minute. It won't be a lesson on history, I promise. Um, we believe in one God, and we believe that that God is our creator God, um, and that an integral part of that God is unity. Therefore, we believe that the God that you believe in, the God that we believe in, no matter what we choose to call that God, is the same God. For example, water and agua are the same thing. It's the same thing to us. We call our God by many names, but mostly Wahe Guru, which means wondrous enlightener. Sikhism was founded in the late uh, 15th, early 16th century in the Punjab region of the Indian subcontinent. And that is modern day Pakistan. It's in the Northwest of India. And it was based on the teachings of our founder, Guru Nanak. Now, Guru Nanak, he believed that there was a better way. There was a better way to worship God. There was a better way to live with others who believed differently. And he was a social reformer. And he came up with... Uh, ideas like, oops, he came up with ideas like the faith in and the meditation on the name of God. If we are remembering God in every second of every day, guess what? We do not have enough time in our day to do anything we shouldn't be doing. He believed in divine unity and equality of all mankind. He didn't believe in the caste system. He didn't believe in elitism. He believed that everybody should do seva, selfless service. And what that means, it doesn't mean thankless service. What it means is I am doing service. I am helping somebody. I'm doing something, and I'm doing it with the right heart attitude. And he believed that we should strive for justice for the benefit of all people, not just our family or our social strata, none of those things. And he believed that we should be honest when we are uh, at work, when we are conducting ourselves in our community, and he believed that we should be active in all of those things. Now, these ideas formed the foundation of Sikhism, and it might not seem very radical to you and I because we're kind of semi-woke, you know, and we're aware of equality, but back then, in those times, he was radical. He was considered uh, kind of way out there. But when he looked around himself, he saw a common thread, a, th a thread of truth. When he looked at those who worshipped, uh, who were Islamic, people who were, who were Hindus, he saw that 
Everybody wanted the same thing for themselves, for their families. He saw that they all wanted to prosper. He also saw that when he looked at their scriptures, when he looked at what they believed, a lot of what they believed at the core was the same thing. So he saw truth in that, but he also saw threads of corruption and greed in actions. And those things shifted the balance of power. And the power went to the wealthy, to the few, and away from the populace, the many. And he didn't think that was fair. And so he decided that he would become essentially a missionary. And for 30 years of his life, he took his beliefs on the road. And he traveled to all the major religious centers that he could find. And he talked to everybody that he passed on the road. And he talked to religious leaders, he talked to politicians, he talked to businessmen about his ideas about equality. And he tried to convince people that in the end, we all want the same things and we're worshiping the same things. It's just that we're putting different labels on things and that if we all work together, we would form a more cohesive community. Eventually, Gudanonic went home and he lived out his next 20 years. And then after he left the world, nine other human gurus followed. Our 10th and last human guru was Guru Gobind Singh right behind me, a very handsome and noble looking person there. A century had passed between these two gurus. Nine people had been between them trying to convince people of the time that there's no need for this fighting, there's no need for arguing about my religion's real and your religion isn't. There's no need for the confusion that even within one religious or spiritual path seemed to be there because that did happen back then. You might have one teacher and then another teacher within Hinduism, for instance, teaching completely different beliefs. And then people would go home and they would argue with one another and spats would, would happen. It was a big mess. And things were not better. In that whole century, it only got worse. And Guru Gobind Singh, bless his heart, he believed so strongly that religious intolerance was at the root of society's problems that in 1699, he created a group of faithful Sant soldiers, Amrit Dadi Sikhs. And he formed what was called the Khalsa. The Khalsa became, by today's standards, the religious right fighters. And they defended everyone, no matter what they believed, against religious oppression, even if they weren't sick even if it cost them their lives. That was part of their oath. And it is still a part of our oath today. And I know this because I myself am a Khalsa member. I made this oath myself. You can pick out a Khalsa member because we always have the steel bracelet here. We always have a distinctive turban and we always have a kirpan on. Men typically wear it under their kurta, and women wear it on top because we don't typically like rough things rubbing against our skin, and men just don't care. So, 
go figure. Anyway, we're still here. Guda Gobind Singh was wit witnessing increased violence, all in the name of religion. I personally think it was just an excuse to take what didn't belong to somebody. Many times this division between people began over something as simple as God's name, that little thing. And so Guru Gobind Singh had this to say about it. Someone is Hindu and someone a Muslim, then someone is Shia and someone is Sunni. But all the human beings as a species are recognized as one and the same. Karta, the creator, and Kadam, the merciful, is the same Lord. Razak, the sustainer, and Rahim, the compassionate, is the same Lord. There is no second. God's up here. He has all these names. As a, a Jew, I knew that. We had a ton of names for God. If I wanted to pray to for healing, I would use one name. And if I wanted to pray for vengeance because my neighbor did something to my beautiful tree that leaned up against the fence, I would use another name. That's like just, uh, I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> Consider therefore this verbal distinguishing feature of Hinduism and Islam as an error and in an illusion. Thus worship the one Lord, who is the common enlightener of all who have been created in his image, and amongst all comprehend the same one light. He was trying to convince people God's one, and we don't need to fight on this. It's, it's silly, it's ridiculous. Guru Gobind Singh obviously didn't care what name was attributed to God, even if it didn't match what he called God. Simply put, we all come from God, and when we leave this earth, we all return to God. So what is the difference between us? To me, there, there wasn't one. Sikhs at the time and still today, we're peace loving, but some of us are prepared to, to defend others who, who are in war zones because we just think it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Now, Sikhs weren't the only ones who saw the problem at the times. This guy is my favorite. Whoops. This is new to me. Kabir. Because truth is everywhere. Seek central scriptures. Our scriptures contain writings of many religions from many different people. One of my favorite Hindu Bhagats is Kabir. He was an Indian mystic poet from the 15th century. And he went on to become a Sufi saint. Kabir came to this conclusion regarding people who didn't believe like him. Remember God, you blind fool. The Lord is true. All worldly affairs are false. I have turned away from death and turned to the Lord. Pain has been eliminated, and I dwell in peace and comfort. My enemies have been transformed into friends. The faithless cynics have been transformed into good-hearted people. Now I feel that everything brings me peace. Peace and tranquility have come since I realized the Lord of the universe. Here, Kabir is giving what? Does anybody know what's happening here? Kabir is giving us his testimony. This Hindu Bhagat 
is telling us that God permeates the entirety of creation and beyond, including our enemies and those he considers the faithless. He bears witness to his own spiritual transformation, and it was an internal thing that happened, an internal shift in his relationship with God. And at this point, remember, he's Hindu. He's talking about God in the singular. He says, it changed him so profoundly that now he sees God in everything, in all, in everyone, including himself. Many of us don't see God in ourselves. It's, it's difficult. Or in that person that doesn't pray like we do or in that person that prays to a God with a different name than we do. But Kabir did. And I think that's because God loves all of his creation, right? And we are his creation. Kabir couldn't help but see God in God's creation, could he? So when he looked at someone, he saw God in them, and he couldn't have animosity or anger or distaste for them. It just wasn't possible anymore. He just couldn't do it. And he's telling us about it in this testimony. And I think that's one of the reasons why, why I really love his writings so much, and, and I'm so thankful that they're included in the Sikh scripture. I love that he told us that he has been transformed. Later on, I didn't include it here, he tells us about how his transformation seems to have been magnified outwardly. Those that he talked to seem to be transformed. And then those that they talked to seemed to be transformed. It was like a magnet. Things had just, a wave of transformation had happened. If the spiritual experience of one person like Kabir could create such a miraculous change, a shift in how we perceive these people that we don't agree with, imagine what kind of a world would result because back then in Kabir's day, it was very much a time of us and them. It's not so, it's not a stretch of the imagination to think that today it's kind of like that. And when I think about how much time has passed since when Guru Nanak came onto the scene, it does make me sad that we're still here fighting about the same things. Kabir's world, Guru Gobind Singh's world, Guru Nanak's world would be a world where everyone would be saying us and we. And God would be in the center of that because they would see God in here. <clears throat> Can you imagine living in a world like that? What would happen? It, it just boggles the mind. That would be a world that would support true peace, true harmony, true brotherhood, true community. It would be such a blessing. I'd like to share a quick personal story before we wrap up today, and then I am planning to, to sing from our scripture, just two minutes, no worries, uh, because it was, it was asked for. Um, 
And after the service today, I'll be here. You can ask questions. And if you want a copy of these slides or anything I've said today, I'll email that to you if you would like. Um, one day, while doing Seva at Goodwater, that's where, where I serve, where I worship, I was working on the line at the Tarrant County Area Food Bank. We were putting food in bags and cars were coming through and we were putting those bags in the back of cars. And an elderly Sikh and his wife came up and they said, they didn't even say hello. They said, do you know Nancy? And I, and I instantly thought, does this man think I know every single Western woman in Dallas-Fort Worth named Nancy? <laughs> Certainly not, because to me, every single time I go out to dinner or anywhere in public with a Punjabi, they seem to know every single Punjabi they run into. Everyone is like a stranger, and two seconds later, they have some common denominator, and it is like they are old, lost friends. It's amazing. I don't know how they do it, but, but, but I thought, he thinks I'm like that, and I just, I, I'm, I'm 60, I am not like that. It's not, it's not how, how it operates for me. And, and I didn't, I, I don't know one Nancy. And I said, no, no, I, I don't, I'm sorry. He didn't tell me why he wanted to know. So I went home that night, and I was not singing, leading prayers that evening, and prayers were put on Facebook Live. Isn't that so hip of us? <laughs> and uh, every, every evening, every morning. And so we, um, I was watching, and suddenly there was the little eye at the top, it, was, it said one, that was me, and then it said two. And then at the bottom, someone put a comment, and her name was Nancy. <laughs> and I am elated, and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, is that her? And I thought, oh no, it can't be. There are, plenty, there are billions of Nancys, it couldn't be her. Then she said, why Guruji, and put three little prayer hands. That's what we say when we are really blessed by something that is put on Facebook. And that's our normal. So the next morning, again, I'm not doing service, and I look, and who shows up? It's Nancy, again. And then, in, and then that night, there she is again. And I thought, oh, this is something. And she must be a regular. I'm new at this good water, so I don't know. So I start looking back, and I look back a month. There she is. I look back two months. There she is. I look back three months. There she is. She's a regular. I'm so excited, and I'm hoping that she is some, a Western Sikh woman my age because we are a rare breed and I really, really wanted a friend. <laughs> I really did. And so the next Sunday, I went to services, and I found someone in Goodwater Management, and I said, do you know Nancy? <laughs> and they said, we know of her. We do not know who she is. And I said, have you ever tried to talk to her on Facebook? Oh, no, because it wouldn't be proper for a Punjabi man to send a message to a woman they do not know. And I am thinking, oh, this is where being a woman is a plus. Let me fix this. <laughs> so as soon as I got home, I sent a message to Nancy saying that I would like to meet her the next time she comes to Goodwater, please. And the next morning I got up, and there, 
there was a message back, and I was so, you had no idea how I ran into the kitchen and I told my husband, look, 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 Nancy, oh my goodness. I was so excited. And she explained that she was an older lady, that she loves our music, and it's soothing. And she watches because she has a medical condition. She's confined to her home right now. She's in pain. And the soothing music makes her feel better. And she is a lifelong, dedicated Christian. I said, okay. And I said, Nancy, I wrote back. We, we did the, the hip thing. We had a conversation. And, and I, I asked if I could do anything for her. And she said something. She said, I am a Christian. I am not a sick, a Sikh. I am not part of your community. And, and I wrote back and I said, Yes, yes, you are. You are a part of, of our community. And it only took a second for me to come to that conclusion. And the reason why was because she was obviously a part of that elderly man and his wife's community because they asked after her. I asked after her. They cared about her. I cared about her. Obviously, she's a part of our community. We, didn't, we don't care. We really don't. Religion didn't come into it. And she said, no, 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 there was nothing I could do for her. However, the conversation ended, and later that day I started thinking about community and who we serve, who we as religious leaders and people of faith serve. And I'll be honest with you, before Nancy said, I'm not part of your community, I'm not sure I would have automatically have considered her a part of, of my community. I'm really not. But I think, for me, when I was young, I didn't have a community beyond my immediate family. When I became a sick, a sick, Community was thrust on me, kicking and screaming, and, and oh my goodness, it was colorful. And so when I became a CASA member, I welcomed community freely, and my world grew. And when I came into service, it grew even sti still, even more. But I don't think I ever considered if my community included those of other faiths. It just didn't dawn on me. I serve women. I serve people who don't come to Goodwater. I was walking around telling people, yeah, I, you know, we, we have hin Hindus come into Goodwater all the time. So I serve Sikhs and, and Hindu families. But I never had said, and Christians. <laughs> I just had never had. I didn't have anything against Christians, but I never realized that community, the people that we serve, really needed to be much wider than I had considered. Part of me for a second did think, you know what, maybe I'm just a stubborn woman, and she said, ooh, I'm not a part, and I said, oh, no, you're not. You certainly are, lady. But... From that day forward, every single time somebody asked me for something, or every single time I saw somebody, I started saying to myself, do not care about their religion. Don't care about how they look at God. Don't care about any of those things. Just ask yourself if they need help, if they need anything, even if they need help with pastoral counseling. Think of yourself as a chaplain of sorts. And so that's what I've done. It has been 
it's really changed me as a leader. I saw Nancy's point. She didn't think she was one of us, yet she watched our program. So obviously she did think she was one of us. And now I see her twice a day, every day, and she's one of us to me. Her presence matters to us. It's been many months since that discussion, and I realize, like Kabir, through time, I've had a transformation. The three Sikh figures I've shared today, two Sikh gurus and a Sufi sant, they all recognized a universal truth. God permeates the entirety of creation, and because we have been created by God, that includes us. And so when we look at people, we need to see God, because that's a choice we make when we interact with others. It's a choice, and when we don't, we are choosing to close our eyes to God. It's a universal truth. I have no idea if your community includes me. I hope it does. From my perspective, I see God in you, and nothing else matters. In closing, because it was requested, I'd like to sing something called Chota Anand Sahib. You might relax. Feel free to read the English provided behind me or close your eyes or not. I'm from Memphis. I'm easygoing. See, two, two points for me, James. Maybe you can think about how you define community. I challenge you to look for the light of God in everybody you encounter this week, every single person, every person you see, every person. Choose to include them in your community. Anand Saab is called the song of bliss. We sing it every single day in our services. And it is a song to God praising God for his presence, and it talks about unity of man, and it talks to what these three great teachers had on their minds. Don't worry that after five it jumps to 40 in the corner, because it is actually 40 verses long, and I didn't think, I thought that would be cruel. So I wasn't gonna do that to you, right? Even we don't do that in our services because we like to eat. And I mean, no, 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 no. I'm just pulling out my words. If you just give me just a little second. Ram Kali Malatija Anan Ek Unkar Sakupasar Ananda Bear Minimai Satgur Mepaya Satgur Tapaya Sedge City Manavaji and Vedayan Ragaratan Paravar Parian Shabri Gavani Ayan Shabato Takavo Adikena Manjni Vesaya Kainan again and Doa Satgur Mepaya E mena mere atu sada roho har nalle har na ro tu mena mere tu sab vasarna angi karo kare tera kaj sab savarna sab naglam smrat swami so come on of sai ke nanake mere sada roho har nalle 
साचे साहेबा क्या नहीं घर तेरे घर था तेरे सब किश है जिस ते ही सो पावे सदा सिफत सलाह तेरी ना मन वसावे नाम जिनके मन वसिया बाजे शबर के नेरे कह नानक सच साहेब क्या नहीं घर तेरे साचा नाम मेरा अडारो साच नाम अडारो मेरा जिन बुक सब गवायन कर शांत सुख मानिया वसिया जिन इच्छा सब उपजायन सदा कुर्बान कीता गुरु बितो जिस तिय बनियान कह नानक सुनो संतो सब दरो पियारो साचा नाम मेरा अडारो वाजे पंथ शब्द तत कर सभाग्य कर सभाग्य शब्द वाजे काल जित दार तारिया पंच दूत तुड वस्त की ते कार कंतर मारिया तुर कर्म पाया तुझको से नाम हार के लागे कह नानक तें सुको हुआ तित गर अनहद वाजे अनन स्नो वग बागियो सगल मनोरथ हो रहे पाद ब्रह्म पब पाया उतरे सगल विसोरे दुख रोग संथा पुत्रे सुनी सची बानी संत साजन पे सर से पूरे गुटे जानी सुनते पनीत कहते पवित्र सत गुरु रया पर पूरे बलवंत नानक गुरु चरण लागे वाजे आना हाथ छोड़े वाहेगुरु जी का खासा वाहेगुरु जी की फतेह आई वांटेड टू से इन क्लोजिंग दैट आई कंसीडर यू ऑल माय ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स under god a single god and i hope that you all feel the same about me and about each other from what i've seen you do it makes my heart sing i cannot tell you how impressed i've been um with this congregation i really am. thank you for having me so much